Welcome to this MOOC on fire monitoring with remote sensing. Our learning goals for today are to understand how remote sensing can support fire monitoring, learn to distinguish between fire intensity and fire severity, and learn how to monitor fire burn severity with remote sensing data. We have an increasing trend of frequency and intensity of fires. When we look at this map here, which shows a change in frequency of long fire with the seasons and percentage, we see that all over the globe, there are patterns which show this increasing frequency, especially in Eastern Africa, but also in Brazil towards the Amazon region, Southern America, we can clearly see these very high increasing patterns. So when we look towards the right to the fire triangle, it shows us that there need to be three variables that a fire can exist. The oxygen, the heat, so a consistent heat period, for example, and fuel, so that the fire can actually, or that it can burn. Fire impacts the environment and settlements. We know this from the news when fires are happening close to settlements or they are destroying habitats of animals. They lead to changes in vegetation composition and an altering of soil characteristics. But they also modify hydrologic regimes by increasing runoff and decreasing soil infiltration. They are driver of climate change, but also vice versa. So we see that due to climate change, we have an increase in frequency and intensity of fires nowadays. There is this difference between fire intensity and fire severity. If we look towards the right on the figure, we see on the left side fire intensity, which is rather during a fire, and on the right side burn severity, rather something after the fire. Fire intensity shows the energy which is released by a fire. So for example, the temperature, the duration, and the radiation power of a fire. So fire intensity rather during fire. Then, after fire, we can monitor what we call fire severity or burn severity. This is about the above and below ground loss of organic matter by the fire. So what is the role of Earth observation here? Earth observation can actually support many parts also of disaster risk management. When we, for example, look towards prevention, we can monitor the hazard conditions and do some risk mapping. So think about the fire triangle. We can monitor if there is a continuous condition of high temperature or heat stress in the region. And maybe forests that are of high hazard, where rather a fire would occur, then we can also map these as risk areas being close to settlements, for example, where people might be affected, um, where habitats might be affected. Then during active fires, remote sensing can monitor emissions. So for example, smoke. If we look to the picture here on the right, we can see the active fire, for example, and the smoke that is occurred due to it. We can measure the temperatures. So in the fire areas, of course, the temperatures are much higher and we can detect the fire size and direction. Also with the smoke, for example, where the smoke is going, you have an idea what is the direction the fire might take. And then after the fire, if we look again at the picture towards the bottom where we have the burn scar, we can monitor the burned vegetation, the burned soil, but also we can go past this fire. So post fire vegetation recovery, you can check how fast is the vegetation regrowing how fast does an area recover from the fire? So coming to how really do this with remote sensing, how to do burn severity monitoring, we quickly do a recap on what the electromagnetic spectrum was, that we have this different wavelengths and different spectral signatures. So for burn severity monitoring, we look first at the spectral response curve of typical vegetation. You can see this here on the left side, you see this relatively high green response due to the chlorophyll fragmentation, and then you see the high response also in the near infrared light. Comparing this with dry and bare soil, you see again the healthy vegetation spectral response curve, and in comparison the dry and bare soil. 
You can clearly see the differences, especially in the near infrared light, but also in the shortwave infrared. Let's look directly at the normalized burn ratio. That's the index which we use for this burn severity monitoring. You can see here again this unburned healthy vegetation response curve, but then you can also see the burn severity where you have the near infrared and shortwave infrared information, which you can use to identify if an area has a high burn severity, moderate burn severity, or low burn severity. So it's based on these two uh, bands, so near infrared and short wave infrared, and it detects the difference in reflection of burnt areas and healthy vegetation. So coming to the final product, you actually conduct this normalized burn ratio monitoring for an image of the pre-fire and an image of the post-fire. And by having the difference of these two images from pre to post, then you have the actual burn severity. But there also exist different platforms where you can already get ready to use data. One is, for example, the Fire Information for Resource Management System, short firms. Here you actually can get information on active fires. It is based on different satellites such as the NASA MODIS, NASA FIRS, NASA NOAA, SUOMI NPP. And it actually has a good coverage. So we have with MODIS imagery every one to two days an image globally and with the fear sensor even every 12 hours. And it is based on a combination of two algorithms. So one is the MODIS algorithm for the detection of emissions of mid-infrared radiation from fires, and the other one is the FIERS algorithm, which tests for internal cloud mass and rejection of false alarms. And there is also the ESA Fire CCI project. Here you can get information on different burned area products, for example. Let's have a look at an example here, a map on the burnt area for the whole year 2019, where you can clearly see the African continent being mostly affected here. And there's also the European Forest Fire Information System, short EFIS. Again, we have active fire detection and it is based on MODIS and FIERS, but you can also conduct a fire danger forecast or get this information and get information on rapid fire damage assessment. So in a summary, with remote sensing, you can detect active fires, um, smoke, and also damaged vegetation, which is rather after the fire. So burn severity monitoring, for example, we saw how it works. It's using optical data to estimate the impact a fire has caused. You can also do hazard monitoring for risk reduction, thinking about the fire triangle and having the information on these three variables, especially heat, stress, for example, can be monitored, but also the so-called fuel. So where is, for example, a lot of potentially dry vegetation, dry forest. And especially in large and also remote areas, remote sensing based monitoring can definitely support national disaster risk management, because it is, of course, dangerous to go into these areas which are at fire but also it helps us to monitor where is the damage, where is the fire occurring and where might it go. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention to this fire monitoring MOOC.